What's going on guys? Reborn here and my alt monk. Gonna have do a deep monk guide for a casual deep run. So here we go. Be sure to um, let me know if you'll have any questions. Well, I started out in room four, which is a far right portal. We've been in this about a minute and a half now. So the goal as a monk for the beginning, when you get into your room, you'll get set up in your room. If you've done plenty of deep runs in the past and other professions. It's pretty straightforward. You just join that room. I'm going to go ahead and pop a cupcake and apple. That way I have a little bit more of a boost for my energy and health there. All right, so it looks like the team already cleared this area. So the main key part of being a monk inside of Urgaz is to keep the team alive, obviously, but most foremost is to ensure that you maintain seed of life on your bonder as a necro monk. If you see here, I'm pretty sure they are running bonds. So I just direct seed the bonder throughout the run, especially when the tank goes in. There's a way for you to tell where your tank is or what your tank is by asking or just looking for usually an assassin or a dervish assassin. So this run we have a dervish assassin as a tank, which is the best runner as y'all can see up there at front. So we know he's the tank. So if there's times where we need to seed him, we will seed him. When I say seed, I mean seed of life. I run a certain custom build that I prefer running two seeds. That's not required or needed, but that's what works for me. So that's what I do. All right, so now that we are going ahead and move up forward following the team, we need to ensure we keep everybody alive. So using the uh, unyielding aura res skill is a, uh, a must. So see how I'm going in here to seed the bonder. I got erupted. I seeded the bonder. See how it's healing the whole party. So while y'all are in the midst of uh, waiting on this to clear up, another thing you want to ensure, I'll be sure to put in the description the build I have as well as the runes I'm running. But you want to have 16 Divine Favor, yes, 16, with a 20% Enchanted Weapon. That's really the minimal that you'll need. Um, I would recommend having you move like a dwarf just because of the fact that it's a safe skill to have when you're trying to run past enemies. For example, Kanakse, if it tries to attack you, you're pretty much going to be covered. So you won't die, or you can pretty much knock down and cripple them so they won't kill you. So now that you have this area clear, we're going to wait for them to get on the pads while we stand up here in the uh, gate line, which is what I call right here. So we're going to wait on the team to finish clearing. And then when the gate opens, we move forward to this targeted area where I'm pointing at right now, right in this area where I'm clicking. So this is where you would stand right about right here. Yep. And then I usually heal party in the midst of them recalling out and all of that good stuff. We're going to go ahead and wait on the team to jump back. Yep, they jump back, so I'm going to seed the bonder. Anybody else I know to seed, I'll use healing seed on. And then I just use a glyph of restoration, well, in energy or restoration, whatever. You can use either or on heal party for energy management. So um, another key point, depending on the deep run you do, sometimes they have different tactics. So you can go skip way, you can do regular, you can do multiple derbs, multiple warriors, elementus, necro, etc. So depending on the actual player base that you have, the more melee you have, usually the easier it is for a monk to, uh, to manage its role as a healer. Because there's a lot less deaths with melee versus like mesmers and ellies because of the fact that you're doing a lot more armor su support with the higher uh, melee weapon uh, warrior and derbs. So here... We're going to go ahead and direct seed the bonder. <coughs> Excuse me, bless me. See how I seeded the bonder, the necro monk. I knew he was the bonder because he had monk secondary, plus I asked before the group started. So I'm just going in here and seeding the bonder as they group up. So the tank grouped them up, and you saw how everybody went to spike. So they're finishing the spike. Sometimes you can use you move like a dwarf to uh, save yourself or do some little bit of damage to pitch in for the team. All right, so now this normally isn't supposed to happen, but it's going to happen. So what we're doing here is we're having an issue where we have the party member bringing the group of the back aggro, the sappings, which is the mesmers to us, which we do not like, but it should be fine. So I'm going to go ahead and seed right now on both of them. The bonder, and then I'm going to go try to heal this person before he dies, which he died, which is okay. I have UA, so we should be safe. 
So I just UA'd him. UA's Unyielding Aura. Anybody that's played multiple times should understand the pro, pretty much the profession behind that. All right, now that we got this person up, the other monk did it while well as a decoy. Uh, I am stuck, I think. Yeah, I'm stuck. So I'm going to go ahead and wait on Cole, the monk, to res me so I can go ahead and restart. So now that we got past the competitive area, the rest of the run is going to be pretty casual to where, I mean, we are pretty much following the team, ensuring that everybody stays alive as, as well as myself, which I died. But we have two monks most runs, so you should be safe to not worry about, hey, if I'm the only monk or not. Usually 90% of runs you do, you will not be the only monk, especially if you're in my alliance, legit. So now that we have the aggro that the uh, tank hold, we can go ahead and um, run on since they already spiked it. So here's where they're going to run on as a team. Somebody's back here killing, so let me go ahead and save them since they're about to die. So that's pretty much the primary role as a monk is to have the uh, pretty much back line of healing potential for anyone that's dying. So we're making okay pace. We're a few minutes behind. We had some stagglers that we had to pick up, but we're okay on time for the most part. So now I'm going to go ahead and direct C. Just like I told you before, I see the bonder, and the bonder usually has it on the tank as well. And now you move like a door for some off damage. Y'all are welcome to edit your build the way you prefer, but there's a minimum of these four skills required. Uh, pretty much, um, you move like a door, seed of life, and unyielding aura, and heal party. Those four would be a minimum, and then yeah, I would suggest uh, modifying the others to the way you would prefer to play it. I personally just prefer the way I've always played it, which is what I'm running. It's worked great. So here we are running as a team, hugging that left area, that way we don't die. And then I'm just going to be uh, party support. Somebody's about to die back here. Let me go ahead and heal them up a little bit. And we should be safe there. Oh. It's always nice to have a cupcake if you can, especially as a monk. The extra energy and health is always nice, as well as that speed boost. So now we are always in the back line as a monk, ensuring that everybody ahead of us is up front. And we maintain pretty much always alive. If we ever die, then the other monk will res us for sure. But in general, you should make the rule of thumb when you're monking in the deep to stay in the back. That way, the aggro will never come to you, and they'll always kill others before yourself. That way, you give your chance a time to heal. Now that we are here, we're waiting on the tank to group these enemies up. Um, as you saw again, I'm just using Seed of Life on the Bonder. The Bonder usually is a Necro 90% of the time. Some runs you will see them use uh, like a Mesmer Monk or even a Elementus Monk. Any of them work. So I just typed Ewe here. Somebody hasn't put it up, so they're about to go spike. All right. Here they go. I'm going to seed while they're spiking right now. And you see how you see the little blue lights coming up everywhere with the extra health gain. All right, that's going well. Here is where it gets a little tricky, especially when you have a mess of players that are trying to run or skip. So depending on the tactics you do, we're going to go ahead and do the skip tactics. It's the looking light. So we want to ensure that we keep everybody alive, maintain UA, unyielding aura. That way you can res people immediately when they die. I just seeded somebody random that I was guessing that was going to take hits. And let me go ahead and pop a few rainbow CCs. That gives some people some extra gain there. Whoa, we're, we're hurting a little bit here for damage. So let me go ahead and seed who I think is taking damage again. And I guessed that right. So this is a little bit of a messy hectic right this moment. It looks scary as a monk, which in a, and actually in a sense it is kind of scary right this moment just because of the fact that what we're dealing with. Um, we usually would be running right now, but at this moment we aren't running. So see how we got people running now. So I think we are clear to run. So that's that simple. See how I haven't used skills for 10 seconds and we were safe. That's why it's nice to have two monks. The other monk covered my butt while I was pretty much not leeching, but trying to get through. 
So now that you're here, you don't want to run ahead of everybody. You want to ensure everybody's ahead. So you're kind of like in the middle line. So you're not going to be in the back or the front as you run through that area, depending on the tactics of your team. So now we're at the uh, halfway point, halfway point at 13 minutes. So I'm going to guess if everything goes right, we're going to be done in about 24 to 26 minutes. Here, I just like to maintain Unyielding Aura and then Heal Party. Why Heal Party after UA? Maintain because UA gives you an additional 60 to 70% extra Heal Party to the party. So you want to use Yielding Aura when you're Heal Party in here. That way, you're giving them the max of the uh, Heal Party benefit from that skill while you go through here. As well as using Seed of Life as you run. Because if you notice, every second we're running, see, watch. As I run, I'm taking damage. I'm taking 20. 20 every second you run. So that's why you Seed of Life throughout this area as well. That way you're always getting the party healed throughout the run. That's another reason why I like to have Healing Seed as well. So I have a double Seed. Let's say I use one of them. Excuse me. One of them and I need one more. So I use that second Seed. I just Seeded the Bonder because I'm assuming the tank would be up there or he has bonds on the derv, and that would heal the party. It's nice to see the bonder 90% of the time. Sometimes somebody else might be taking a lot of hits, so you can see the life them as well. So we're on to the third and final bridge. We have pretty safe aggro bubble. We try to human like black dwarf him just to do some damage to finish him off. So basically we're at the third bridge, so we're going to wait on them to finish these off. I'm always in the back. Notice as a monk, I'm staying in the back of the aggro at all times. That way if somebody dies, I'm first-hand emergency. And we're doing pretty good on damage, so we aren't going to have any struggles with with uh, having to heal so much. Of course, as well, you notice we have a few extra uh, strong hand players. Like we have two Durs instead of one, and as well as a Paragon. So that's an extra support rolled out. You know, you don't always have every run. So it's always nice as a monk to have that, that uh, Paragon as your third support healer. Which, with all the um, extra bonds that they give you, with the uh, speed boosts and heal and healing armory and such all right so now that we're here we're going to go ahead and let them go in and spike this is where you want to have ua up for emergencies just in case if there's an issue and i have a staff off for this area because sappings scatter here and sappings will use chaos storm on everybody yes everybody literally and we do not need that as an issue see how there's chaos storm everywhere so now this is where we have a paragon that helps but imagine you don't have a paragon here this is where we would just run on there's nothing really you can do once they scatter and the fact that they scattered was an issue but there's really minimal that we're able to handle on that now that that happened so we just pretty much have to move forward and that was a pretty good pace because we had a paragon but worst case scenario you would have had four or five people die and all you need to do is maintain a cupcake if you have them i would re recommend them for this that way you can break aggro easily running that 25 percent speed boost so basically we if they did die, like four or five, you would UA one or two and you would keep moving away from the uh, groups of sappings. So this area is going pretty fast paced for nonstop moving. It's nice to have this paragon here, but let's just imagine we don't have a paragon. So I cast UA again, I use glyph so my energy is not killed if you're running my build, and then I use heal party every five seconds. Yes, every five seconds, that way you give enough uh, time for everybody to get a little bit of help gained from their own self healing as well. So I went ahead and just use heal party twice, let it gain, do one more. Anybody that comes near me, I you move like a dwarf. See, there was one near me, so I you move like a dwarf there. So we're doing good on time there. I'm with the other monk in the back. I got a little stuck. You move like a dwarf again. That's why it's always a nice skill to have. So if somebody's ever trying to attack you, you're always covered. We have somebody that's about to die. He's at almost half. So, uh-oh, I got stuck. Was that worth keeping? Nope, it was Q12, so I wouldn't keep it. I got stuck there. See, the monk seated me, so we have a good monk with me. So that means that, that makes it a lot easier for you as well. Sometimes you might be the bad monk or the other might be the bad monk. So one person will do more work than the other. But we were working together as a team, so it worked really well. Nobody unfortunately died there because we were a good team with everything we did. Q10, Domination 20, that's merch. Just a quick open note for people watching this still. 
if you have any off-brand modded like 20% Dawn with a Divine or 20% Protection with Fire Magic or something, anything that's like two different ma non-matching attributes to your skin, that is pretty much merch. Nobody's really going to buy it. But if it was like Energy, Q9 Energy, and then it had like 20% Fire, that's still a matching attribute that an Elementus could use with Fire on Energy. So that would be a benefit. But if it's like a Mesmer and a off-brand, that wouldn't benefit at all. So this is where you probably want to maintain, um, anytime you see sappings, take your staff off. That way you don't have to deal with the chaos storm or the energy drain that it, that it does. Let me go ahead and res up Disturb since he died trying to spike. So we shall see how this goes. I rest him. I'm going to go ahead and knock Canoxie down here. That's another thing you can help with the team is knocking him down to interrupt his Nightmare Refuge anytime. I type EOE, that way we can get some EOE just in case we're able to. And I seeded the Bonder to give us a heal boost. And just be ready to res a lot of people right this moment. You can tell maybe there's going to be a few deaths. So this is where you uh, want to ensure everybody's alive. So anyway, this is it for the run. And let's see, 19 minutes. So I was five minutes, four minutes, five minutes behind the guest time I set. So that was a pretty, pretty uh, casual speed run as a uh, monk guide for the deep. So if y'all have any questions regarding monking in general in Guild Wars or as well as for just the deep run, feel free to comment or let me know in game the Reborn Monk. And if you haven't already, subscribe and thanks for watching. This is Reborn out.